Hello everyone. Ever got goosebumps from listening to music? Ever stop to think that that's actually pretty weird? In fact, for most of us in the Western world, we can't even go a day without being exposed to some form of music. In shopping malls, car radios, ringtones, adverts, film music, and that's just to name some of the ways that we're inadvertently exposed. And invariably, that music will elicit a response, even if we're not aware of it. The range of responses is vast, everything from physiological reactions or altered brain chemistry to more psychological responses like heightened emotions, irritation, or recognition. We tend not to think about it too much because it happens all the time. But if we do, we might begin to ask how and why music seems to be able to cut through us in ways that visual arts tend not to. Take goosebumps, for example. Goosebumps are an evolutionary relic from when us now naked humans used to have a lot more hair. When the body is stressed in particular ways, such as through fear or extreme cold, the adrenal gland releases adrenaline into the body. This increases your heart rate, dilates your pupils, and stimulates your muscles and is commonly known as the fight or flight phenomenon. This was great when we were hairy little ape people, as not only did having our hair stand up on end make us look larger to predators, but it also stored more heat between the hair and our body. These days, however, not so much. So why does music trigger the same response? Uh, good question. To be honest, no one really knows for sure. But the more we know about the brain, the more we're beginning to understand the relationship between cognitive, emotional, and physiological processes. What we do know, from research like this, is that music seems to stimulate our internal reward system, the thing that releases feel-good hormones into our bodies every time we do something good for our survival, like eat, exercise, or reproduce. And that the emotional responses triggered by music are no less influential than those caused by real-world emotional events. To take this a step further, in his book The Prehistory of Music, Ian Morley states that there is considerable overlap between cerebral blood flow to the limbic system of the brain, an area of the brain primarily concerned with emotions, but also with euphorias created by opioid-inducing drugs. In short, your brain on music looks strikingly similar to your brain on drugs. But in trying to answer this question of goosebumps, we're inevitably left with more questions. Like, why does music even elicit an emotional response in the first place? This is really a topic for another time, though. The funny thing is, taste has very little to do with it. This process skips our cognitive processing and makes a beeline straight for our primitive side, meaning that we can often get the chills from music we really don't like. It seems that music is hardwired into us. In Schneck and Berger's book, The Music Effect, they claim that the voice was perhaps the first instrument through which Homo sapiens, or perhaps even earlier species with vocal abilities, could call out to one another, attract animals, convey needs, communicate within groups, establish presence of self and others, and most of all, to express human conditions such as needs, desires, fears, pain, joy, excitement, etc. As far-fetched as this may seem in our language-centered communicative world, it's worth remembering that the earliest musical instruments ever found date back some 43,000 years, roughly coinciding with the dawn of paleo-modern homo sapien behavior, and predates written language by some 40,000 years. This mix of grunts, shouts, basic patterns of rhythm and other noises could be considered as a form of musical proto-language. But it would be a mistake just to leave the question there. There are clearly cultural determinants that guide this process. The chills response, though native to all humans, is framed by cultural perspective. Thus, certain musical styles are more likely to induce the response in those who have been exposed to that music. This comes down to pattern recognition. Our brains love patterns, and the ability to predict future events with a certain degree of accuracy is arguably one of the reasons we've become such a successful species. And when we're able to determine those patterns of predictability, we're rewarded for it. Interestingly, the increased adrenaline and blood flow to our muscles that the fight or flight response induces may at least partly account for why we feel compelled to move to music. It may partly account for why we dance. So music can have intense physiological effects on us. It can change our heart rate, respiration, blood flow to certain areas of the body, and brain chemistry. But in the end, although we may be able to analyze how, we really have no definitive answer as to why music does what it does to us. Our best guesses are that it may be linked with the development of language, and further still, our evolution into modernity. But given that we know very little about any of these issues, we may still be a long way from answering the seemingly simple question of goosebumps. 
If you have any questions or comments, then feel free to post in the comment section below, and you can find us on Facebook. If you want to keep learning about ethnomusicology, musicology, or music in general, then you can go to youtube.com forward slash ethnomusicexplained and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you soon.